Okay, so I've got myself an electric car. Now I need to get a charger. So if you're one of my viewers that already has an electric car and you already have a charger, type down in the comments which charger you've got, what do you like about it, what do you not like about it. If you haven't yet got an electric car and haven't yet got a charger, maybe you want to go and have a look at some of those comments because the people typing right now have got way more experience than I have. But... For those of us that don't yet have chargers, here's a little bit of some of the research I've been doing and a few of the chargers that I've been narrowing it down to. So here's some of my requirements. It has to be compatible with Octopus and their smart tariffs. It has to have decent enough reporting so I can track my mileage and my consumption and look at some of the history. And I think I want a tethered one. Now, if you've got experience and you think otherwise, then let me know in the comments. But these are four of the ones that I've kind of narrowed it down to. Top left, we got Hypervolt, and then top right, a very familiar Zappy, and then the bottom left is the Omi Home Pro, and then the bottom right is the Hydra Cubus. So um, here's a little table showing some of the bits and pieces. Interestingly, the Omi is the only one that isn't compatible with solar, um, so you would be relying solely on smart tariffs and time of use tariffs and setting um, either it integrated natively with the APIs to know the times to charge or you set in time as manually. All of them carry a three-year warranty. Um, th these are just a couple of ratings that I've chucked in there about the aesthetics and the cable management. I'm not really sure how important that is. For me, the aesthetics aren't hugely important. It's on hidden side of the house that no one can really see. Uh, cable management more so. I can imagine that it could be quite frustrating if you don't have reasonable cable management when you're unplugging it and plugging it in. Surprisingly to me, um, the IP ratings varied, IP65 being kind of a standard. The Hypervolt goes one step higher at IP66, but the Omi Home Pro only at IP55, which was surprising for something that is going to be externally mounted for many years. Um, the Zappi can, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be used by the app because it's got a screen there, so you, you don't need to delve into an app to set anything up. And the screen can be pin code locked so that if you live in a place where there's a lot of passing traffic, you don't need to worry about someone just pulling up and plugging in. For me, once again, that's not an issue here where I live. The Hypervolt seems to uh, be... Uh, a kid's toy has a fancy light show again not an issue for me the charger won't be visible so it doesn't really matter at all although it did look like the uh, the large band around the outside of the charger if it's blue solid blue then it's in standby mode if it's green then it's charging and if it's red then there's a fault so maybe that is quite a nice quick easy visual to see hey uh, this is working or not working or whatever. So maybe the lights are not just a gimmick. The Omi Home Pro doesn't appear to have any Wi-Fi connectivity. I'm not sure about Ethernet. The spec sheets were difficult to dig into, but it looks like for the first three years at least, Omi pays for a 4G connection to your charge point. Now, I'm not exactly sure what happens after three years. So anyone that's with Omi, please let me know. They're very, very popular and they're really pushed by Octopus. So um, I'm just a bit, um, yeah, a bit confused as why they wouldn't offer Wi-Fi on what they call their Home Pro. It's their most expensive charge point. And then finally on the Hydrocubus, uh, RFID cards which may be very practical depending on where you live you can just pop one on your key ring and then you can just tap it and away you go but let's move forward on something else I picked up all these prices from one website and they go from the Zappi up here as the most expensive the Hypervolt closely behind that and then a bit of a jump down to the Omi Home Pro well, it's over £100 cheaper than the Zappi and then jumping down once again another £100 cheaper down to the Hydra Cubus and uh, I want to know what the catch is why is the Hydra so much cheaper than the Zappi which the Hydra seems to have all of the functions that the Zappi has apart from having a display and having external buttons. So 
Um, these were the prices, as I said, on electricpoint.com and the prices here I've added into the table, <coughs> including VAT. The one catch that I did find was that the Hydrocubus requires a 49 pound CT clamp if you're using it with solar or you need it for load curtailment, depending on what else you've got in the house and what your main fuse is and everything else. So um, let me know in the comments uh, what else I should be looking at or what I shouldn't be looking at. Am I um, going down the right path or am I barking up the wrong tree? I intend to get this charge point fitted and forget about it, so I'd rather do it right the first time, especially as the cost of the charge point, uh, it seems to be roughly about two thirds of the cost of the overall uh, installation and then the installation costs for the electrician and everything typically seem to be about a third of the cost. So um, I want to make sure that uh, I'm not having an electrician coming back. I'm not sure exactly on the reliability. There seems to be plenty of uh, stories online of zappies going faulty, but could that just be the case that they are the most popular and they're commonly, well, at least when I have a little stroll around my local area, there's quite a few houses that have zappies by the garage or on the wall or whatever. So if they're very popular, then maybe the rate of failure, maybe we're perceiving it to be higher. But otherwise, um, let me know what you think. Um, and uh, if aesthetics matter to you, maybe you want to go for a minimalist look like the Hypervolt one looks kind of sleek if it's on display and has some deep reasonable cable management behind there the zappy of course it has the cable management and once people tell you it looks like a toilet seat you may or may not forget that the omi looks um, okay and the hydra i kind of actually prefer the look of the hydra to the omi i don't know what it is about the omi one but you can see these screws are on display they're hidden on the hydra and uh, it just looks more thought out and finished. The Hydra as well, um, I don't know if it's just the equal size of it, the, the Omi, maybe it just looks a bit small, but either way, does aesthetics even matter when it comes to electric vehicle charge points? Probably not. The cable management probably is something that would be a little bit more important, and I wonder why Hydra haven't offered some sort of raised lip because they've got nice rounded corners like you could wrap the cable around that but uh they they seem to have missed the trick i don't know maybe there's some engineering and uh, industrial design that i'm not aware of and uh maybe my list of requirements is too brief maybe there's more to uh, consider this is why i want to have some of the uh, reporting because I've tracked now uh, quite a few years of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles, 86 fuel ups on my S class, only four fuel ups on the Aprilia. I need to ride that a bit more. Uh, the Peugeot 35 fuel ups, 19 on the Suzuki, 84 fuel ups on our Red Say Alhambra, and our previous Black Say Alhambra, 37 fuel ups. 32 fuel ups on the Citroen C1 and 11 fuel ups on my old Honda CBR. And as you can see, winning by some margin is the little Peugeot uh, moped at over 100 miles per gallon. And in second place, is that going to be the Citroen? No, second place is going to be my Aprilia and then a little Citroen C1 coming after that. So I'd love to start adding to that, but this, this service on Fuelly, for example, um, doesn't um, doesn't really cater for electric vehicles, so I'm going to have to um, analyze it in a different way. But I like to see the data, and it's been quite interesting actually to see how different tires and stuff um, contribute to the fuel consumption of some of these vehicles. Anyway, leave something in the comments, give me a like if this is a helpful video in any way, or thumbs down if it was rubbish, and let me know why in the comments. Goodbye.